Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dammy, also known as Dammy Doodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is not Wednesday. No. Today is Thursday, the 22nd of September, 2016. And this is episode 210. So we'll talk more about why we're recording on a different schedule in a little bit. But first, we'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys to all our returning viewers, and a big hi to any new viewers. Thanks for getting, giving us a shot. Hope you enjoy the show. Um, Dammy, we have a few people who introduced themselves this week in the Ravelry group. Why don't you give them a shout out? Okay. Lane, who is Lane L. from California. Jenny, who is Minikin from Western Australia. Kathy, who is Red Cat from Maryland. And Carol, who is Carola77 from Ger Germany. Welcome, we're so glad to have you guys. So, Dammy, if somebody's not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do and why? You should join and introduce yourself in our introductions thread because you will get a shout out on our next episode and you will be able to participate in all of our cows and giveaways. That's right. Well, we have a lot of stuff to talk about today. I have a feeling this is going to be a little longer episode. Um, so, we probably should just jump right in. Here we go. Now going to talk about what's on our needles. So what is on your needles, Dammy? I am still making wood pigeons of happiness for Christmas presents. This pattern is the Bluebird of Happiness by Sarah Elizabeth Kellner on US 4 3.5 millimeter and the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinach, Spinner's Signature 4 ply in the Wood Pigeon colorway. And I got as far as I got a little further than last week, I, I did those stitches together. Okay, so now what do you have left? Just stuffing it and then pulling it closed and weaving it in? Yes. Okay. How many of these are you needing to make? I don't know. I was just going to make as many as I could. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So what else has been on your needles? Um, uh, I am working on a design project. For our like, White Christmas collection? Yes. Um, so... Um, it's on US 5s, 3.75 millimeters, and the yarn is really old yarn. This is the Knitting Goddess, I don't know what base it is, I can never remember the base names. It's a sock base with nylon, and the yarn is the Alexandrite colorway. It's very pretty in pink. Yep. So, can you talk a little bit maybe about what you're designing? Um, it's a shawlette. Okay. And it's going to use a second color for the edging, is that right? Mm -hmm. And you've got something, I can't remember what it is. West Yorkshire spin Spinners Signature 4 Ply in the Poppy Seed colorway. There we go. So, and it, so this will be one of the four patterns that we release in our White Christmas collection in December, mm -hmm. which we're very excited about. All right, you have anything else on your needles? No, so what's on your needles? Okay, well my zigzag blanket is still on the needles. This is the 10 stitch zigzag pattern by Frankie Brown. It's on US 4's 3.5 mil needles. And the yarn I'm using right now is very colorful yarnings in the Peacock's Galore colorway. Revenge. Peacock's Revenge colorway. Um, yeah, I did not take it with me when I went away this week, so... Um, I haven't worked on it in a few days, but I'm making progress. Next thing that's on my needles that is making mega progress, even though I still didn't take it with me either, is my Epic Haven Poncho. And this is the Haven Pattern by Holly Yo. I haven't woven in ends recently, I need to do that. Um, I'm on US 8's, five mil needles, and I'm not gonna tell you all the yarns because you can go to my project page or look in the show notes. But I'm over halfway done now. So there's where it starts. And it continues, 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 continues. And now I'm using this right here. And I have two more colors to add to it. So I am making very good progress on it. I am, I, what is today? Today's the 22nd. I may make it a goal to finish, try to finish it by the end of September. That could happen. Um, and then the other thing that has gotten a lot of progress, because I took it with me on our trip, is uh, birthday socks for my bestie Katie. And this is from my French Vanilla Cappuccino Socks pattern. Um, I'm on US 1.5's 2.5mm needles. 
And this is Zwerger Garn Opal Sweet and Spicy in the Chili colorway. So here's sock number one. And here is sock number two. So I did not match them up. I just started where it was, which I think is fun. So I only have about maybe like 20 more rows and then I'll be ready for the cuff. So um, what got in my way of knitting more on the trip is I took an actual physical book and I can't knit while I read physical books versus if I'm reading a book on my iPad, I can knit. <sighs> I know. I know. So, but hopefully I'll finish these in the next few days. And then I get to cast on. Where is it? Right. Um, there. You know what this is? This is Gnome Acres on the house gnome base in the star's hollow colorway. I'm so excited. So Dammy wound that up for me and that is the next thing on the needles and there went yarn under your desk. Oops. Um, that's everything I'm working on. So we should move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about our finished projects. So what did you finish this week? I finished just one thing, the sample sock I knit for your new Battlestar Galactica inspired pattern on US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters on Third Vault Yarns Librarian Sock in a Secret Colorway. That's so. right. Um, stay tuned to the end of the podcast because these kits, the Battlestar Galactica inspired kits, are available for sale right now for pre-order. And so stay tuned for those details. Did you finish anything else this week? No. Okay. I finished one thing, my weekly preemie hat. This is number 38 for the year. This is from my free top-down preemie hat pattern on Ravelry. I knitted it on US 6's 4mm needles. And the colorways are Ginger's Hand-Dyed Slender DK in the Liquid Sunshine colorway. And Lanatium X Machina Merino DK Twist in the Cherry Cabaret colorway. I used up all of the liquid sunshine colorway that I had. So, yep, that's the only thing I finished this week. But we have a lot of things to talk about in yummies. Yep. So here we go. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show, yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies, and we have a lot. First up, I want to give you just a quick Whole30 update because, um, so for y'all who have been with me, with us for the last, how many months would that be? Seven? Eight months? Seven. I've been doing on and off the Whole30 program. I did a Whole100 and then I did another Whole30 and then I did a Whole14 and I have lost 50 two pounds since February. I'm very proud of myself. Um, I didn't eat great the last few days while we were gone on our trip, but everything in moderation. That's her new favorite catchphrase. Everything in moderation. Um, so I rewarded myself and bought a new pair of boots which I didn't have a pair of boots before. So I bought a pair of boots and I love them. And I'm putting a picture up on the screen right now as long as I don't forget. Otherwise you can go see it on Instagram. But yay, boots. Okay, so the reason we're recording later this week than normal is because I surprised the hubs with a little getaway for our 19th wedding anniversary, which was on Tuesday. So you may remember back when we recorded the 200th episode, you and I went to this little village of North Barrett and it was such fun and it's such a cute little village. And so the hubs hadn't gone and so we, I took him there. So we took the train out Tuesday morning, late morning, and then just got home about an hour and a half ago. <laughs> um, and stayed at an Airbnb place and it was pretty just, uh, just a pretty much just a really relaxing trip. We didn't have really a schedule other than 
on Tuesday afternoon, we took a boat tour out to Bass Rock where there were a gazillion and one birds. Gannets? Gannets. That's the type of bird. Um, so at the end of the podcast, in the after the credits segment, I'm going to put a lot of video and pictures. So if you are at all interested in that, stay tuned after the credits for photos and videos. If you get seasick, you may want to fast forward through part of it because I did some video of like the water and such and it might make you seasick. But we had a fabulous time. It was a fun little boat tour. And then other than that, we just ate meals and we played cards and we laid in bed and read books and just had just a relaxing time. But I did pick up a few things while we were gone. One thing from, um, oh, I didn't bring her card over here. This is from Chandler's, which is a yarn shop, the only yarn shop in North Barrett. And you might remember I bought a skein of yarn from them when we, at our, during our part of our street, it's that one right there. But, um, so they're, there's not really an, um, a data signal there for your phones. And so I was like, oh, I think I might knit Dammy a hat for Christmas. But then I, what I had to do, because I couldn't get onto Ravelry, was I called you. And I was like, how would you feel about a hat for Christmas? And so you found a hat pattern. What am I knitting for you? Violet waffles. By who? I don't know. Violet waffles is what I'm knitting. And I was like, okay, what weight of yarn do I need? How many yards? So this is the DK Blueface Lester Hand Painted Superwash, 100 grams, 225 yards. And there's not a colorway name. So it's kind of a pastel-y jewel tone a little bit. Purples and greens and blues and kind of yellowy creams. Don't you think? Mm. So that. Um, <laughs> we popped into a little shop on our way to the train station and it was like kind of a crafty place. Um, mostly it was like to like paint ceramics, kind of that type of studio type stuff. But I saw this and I had to have it. It is a wee woolly sheep accounted cross stitch card kit. Isn't that adorable? And it comes with everything you need. It's got the needle and the, the thread and everything in it. I have not done a counted cross stitch in probably 11 or 12 years. I don't think I've done one since I started knitting. But this is a wee little one, so I'm going to do it and put it up on my wall. Wee woolly. I also picked up scarves for Dammy and I. I got this beautiful dandelion. This one has thistles. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, it's too big. And then, okay, so hold on, I gotta take a sip of water. We were walking in the little town, little village, and we walked by the shop, and I looked in the window, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have it! And the house was like, what, what are you, what's going on? Because it was really, it was like a little, a little like convenience store type place, but then they had racks of cards. And this is the card, I, well actually, so what I saw was, hanging on my wall over there is a card with a little gray kitty wearing a frog hat. And this is from the same place, a pink heart sheep. How adorable is that? I could not pass it up. It's going to go on my wall too. Bah. This How one is did called. You no, know it's from the same person. Because it was in a plastic thing and it had the thing. And that one was like right below it for sale. This one is called Love You, E W E. Love You. And then we were walking past um, the. This is actually from the um, charity shop done by Cancer Research UK. And I saw this and was like, I must have it. So I got a tin pack of it. It's a Santa sheep. 
So this one is called Winter Sheep, and it says Warmest Christ Christmas Wishes inside. I don't send out really a lot of Christmas cards, but I was like, oh, I have to have it. And it was for charity, too. Um, I'm trying to see. I have no idea if they're available online, but if they are, it's going to be at CRUK.org. Cancer Research UK. CRUK.org. How adorable is that? And other than that, on the trip, we just we ate a lot of good food. We ate, oh my gosh, probably my favorite was the gelato, which was made like all locally. So the milk was from a local dairy, the Fruits and such were all from local growers, everything. So the hubs had Belgian chocolate. And I had a scoop of mint chocolate chip and a scoop of raspberry and elderflower. And it was so good. Also had amazing coffee. There was not a Starbucks there. But there was this lovely little place that had salted caramel lattes. I had two of them. I also had a vanilla latte. Croissants. Scones. A cheese scone. Dammy's still doing Whole30. As you can see by the look on her face that I'm torturing her with all this food. We had pizza last night. A really yummy pizza. It was a lovely trip. So yeah, we had a fun time away. And you were here by yourself. Yes. And how did you how did you manage? I mean, I know you threw a huge party and you had to kick them all out while we were on our way home. Yeah. Oh, I got new earrings too. Let's see. Aren't they cute? Hearts. You went somewhere though. Yeah, I went to the National Museum of Scotland. Which we've been to a few times. Yeah. Said hello to my friend Euphina Moon. Who's Euphina Moon? The mummy. Yeah, I I always seek him out whenever I go there. Cause there there's a bust that you can see what he looked like when he was alive. So. Um, he, he 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 creeps Mama out. But he he's just he's just a nice mummy trying to chill. Um. Did you see Dolly? Was Dolly still there? Mm-hmm. Although the, the science section was really busy. Dolly the sheep. Yep. Other than that, you just kind of hung out and did school? Yep. Still prepping for the SAT? Mm hmm Which is a week from Saturday? Mm. You're going to be fine. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I came home to goodies from Glasgow Soap Company. Uh, they're on Etsy, glasgowsoapcompany.etsy.com. So Glasgow's not very far away from us, less than an hour. So we needed some new, I like to use natural soaps, so we needed some more. And so we got, well, you want to show what you, which ones you got? Yes. Mine, I got a cappuccino. Which I got a cappuccino as well. Look at the top of it. Ooh. It has... Olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, water, coffee grounds, and par parfum. Parfum. Parf parfum. It's a, like a scent. It's oh, smell. perfume. Yeah, parfum. Okay. Mm, I can't really smell good. it very well because it's wrapped in plastic. Look, look, look at the like little gold. Bits I know. On it. Mine doesn't have as much gold, but yeah. And then I've been craving oatmeal. I don't know why, so I got a. Oh, Oatmeal, milk, and honey one. It has oats on top of it. Yeah, it has olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, water, goat's milk, oatmeal, and locally sourced honey. And then I got the peppermint humbug. Oh, look. Oh. Oh, yeah, that one just has it, too. <laughs> it's just hidden behind there. Um, so the peppermint one has olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, water, peppermint essential oil, and activated char charcoal to draw out impurities. Mm. And then I also got, oh, we got this one. How cute is this? This is for a gift for, for, for two little friends. 
Um, so you use the soap and then you end up with two little toy fishies. I thought the fish were the part of the soap. They are. You you wash, wash, wash. Oh, I thought like the fish are the soap. Oh no, they're toys. Oh. The purple one looks like it's like coming apart slightly. I don't know. It looks a little upside down. It is upside down. And then I got oh. coffee lip balm. Batch number three. It has coconut oil, shea butter, beeswax, and coffee. It smells good. It smells so good. I was tempted to use some of it. I might be, be convinced to share a little bit. So, yay. So, we haven't used it yet, but yeah, they smell good and they look good. So, um, we will try them out. Okay. Do we have any other yummies other than the 30 zillion things that I've said? Don't eat your soap. But it has oats on it. Yeah. Do we have anything else? No. Okay. Well, then let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is it? It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo A Day Challenge. We have a list of prompts for each month, so you take a look at the prompts for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like. But we take our favorites from Instagram. That's right. So um, we're finishing out September, which today I think is the first day of autumn. Mm -hmm. So we're finishing out September with that. And then we will um, release the October list next week, which is full of autumn me and Halloween -y goodness. Um, all right. I like Halloween. And then as soon as Halloween is over, it's Christmas for two whole months plus six days. All right. Well, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. So those were our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. So it's never too late to join in. Yes. So just take a look at the prompts list. So for example, today when we're recording on the 22nd, it's autumn. Interpret it however you would like. We're very tear friendly. Interpretive dance. It isn't dance. It's choreography. If you were to design a pattern based off that, what oh. would it be? A towel? With black and pink. Maybe. Maybe we'll have to do that for <laughs> with, uh, White Christmas collection number two next year. We'll see. We'll see. So anyway, you take a look at the prompts list, take a picture related to that prompt, post it on Instagram, make sure you use the hashtag GGK Crafty Pad in your um, caption because that's how we find your photos and yours might get chosen. All right, let's talk about upcoming events because we've got two very important ones coming up very shortly. Yes. Um, we will be vending at the Yarn Porium in London on Saturday the 5th and Sunday the 6th of November. So this is an event put together by Yarn in the City, and we're very excited about it. It's very soon. It is very soon. We have a lot to do before then. Um, and then we advocate making a holiday of it. Go to Yarn Porium. Do some sightseeing in and around London, and then come to the Geeky Puff and Nip Palooza, which is a retreat that you and I are co-hosting with our friend Sam. It'll be in Farnham, England, which is about 50 miles southwest of London, but very accessible by train and by car. Um, this will be on Thursday the 10th of November through thir Sunday the 13th of November. Um, so we still have spots open if you want to attend the retreat. We have some spots still available if you would like to just come take a class or three or two one two or three because <laughs> you can only take three total because there's only three class sessions unless you have a time turner like Hermione and then you could take all eight classes 
Um, the vendor market will be open to the public from half one to five, and the entry fee is three pounds or a knitted or crocheted item for charity, unless you get a golden ticket, Ooh. which go those go up for sale this Sunday, the 25th of September at 3 p.m. BST. And that is a 10 pound fee, but you get entry into the vendor market from 10 o'clock. And then you get entry back in after lunch for no additional charge, and you get a Geeky Puffin Knit Palooza goodie. So that is how you can make sure that you get your coveted items from your favorite vendors. Um, and also this past week we started on Fridays, we are highlighting our vendors and mm -hmm. picking our favorite item that they currently have available or um, some of them have asked us to highlight an item that they're going to have at the vendor mm -hmm. market. So every Friday from now through the retreat we are highlighting vendors. We are also collecting door prize and goodie bag stuff. So if you are a fiber business and would like to get your stuff in front of our attendees, um, email us at geekypuffinknitpalooza at gmail.com or PM me, Java Pearl and Ravelry. Um, we are very excited about the retreat. It's coming up way, way quickly. And we have a lot to do, but it's going to be a lot of fun. And so we hope to see you there. All right, we have more stuff to talk about. We should move on. Now we're going to talk about what we're reading and watching. So what are you reading? I am still reading Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. I didn't get a lot read on it again. School and SAT. School. Yes. It's kind of taking president. Pre president? President Pre Obama. President. Pre precedent. Precedent. I was like, it's, I know it starts with pre. I could not get it out. Um, anything else you're reading? Mm -mm. Okay. I'm still reading The Fringe Hours, which have no relation to the Fringe TV show that we're rewatching. Um, Fringe Hours, Making Time for You by Jessica N. Turner. And then fiction-wise, I am um, rereading A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I'm utilizing, though, I, this is a free download on Kindle. It's called The All Souls Real-Time Reading not company, companion, autocorrect, companion. And what it is, is it sets the schedule for you to read the book in real time. So like as the events are happening. So um, I'm kind of doing that in conjunction with uh, Vegan Jilly from the Knitting Broomstick podcast is doing an All Souls trilogy uh, cal. In October so um, I'm rereading that and then also on the trip I started reading Pride and Prejudice and Zombies by Jane Austen and Seth Graham Smith I'm about I'm a little over halfway through it so it's very ridiculous mm -hmm. I told the hubs he was like are you really enjoying that and I was like I, I said, well, because it's Jane Austen, but, you know, with the zombies. So I'm, but I'm trying to get through it so we can watch the movie with Matt Smith in it. So, um, if I'm reading anything else, it's not coming to mind right now. So let's talk some television. Uh, we finished rewatching season one and are now rewatching season two of Fringe. Uh, Charlie's dead. He was shapeshifted. Oh, yeah. And then thrown into the I'm like, Charlie furnace. from Numbers? No, from from Fringe. And... William Bell. Yes, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, wow. And we know that Peter is from the alternate universe. But he doesn't know it yet. Yeah. We're having fun with that. Um, you and I are rewatching season two of Gilmore Girls. Did we finish mm -hmm. season two? 
Um, yes. And did we start watching season three? I think so. Okay. Possibly. Uh, let me, I'll hide by that yellow so I can... Yes, we did, because the summer festival. Oh, we did. Okay, so we finished rewatching season two, and we're rewatching season three. So there was the film by Kirk. Mm -hmm. That was hysterical. And Rory missing a Lorelai's graduation from business college. That was so sad. Made me cry. And then the Lazy Hazy Days. Mm -hmm. And yeah, because we're almost to Rory and Dean break up. So she can be with Jess. And this is but not... But he doesn't have his act together. No, this is not hashtag Team Jess after he got his act together. This is hashtag not Team Jess because he doesn't have his act together. When do they devil the egg his car? In I think that's the next. I think that's the next episode that we have to watch, which happens before she breaks up with Dean. Why? Why are they devil egging his car? Because remember, she's jealous of the other girl, and so they oh. decide to, to to devil egg his car after Sherry's baby shower. Mm -hmm. Why didn't they eat the deviled eggs? Because there was a lot of food at the shower, and they ate, and but then Sherry insisted they take them home. If I'm remembering correctly. The Hubs and I also finished rewatching season four and we're rewatching season five of Numbers. Um, so fall shows are coming back now. Mm -hmm. We watched, we're watching season two of Blind Spot. So Jane is now a triple agent. Mm -hmm. The NSA lady is from Shetland, which is a UK show that the Hubs and I watched. Where it with there was lots of sheep, but the sheep are not the criminals. Criminals are the real criminals. Shepherd is Jane's mother, and Roman is her brother, and they have a mole in the FBI, but we don't know who the mole is. Mm. And Roman is Luke Mitchell, who was in the previous season of Agents of Shield. Yes. No, previous two seasons, I think. Yeah. All right, and then what else? Uh, we finished watching season two of Dark Matter, space station explosion. At the very end, remember, well, they're all still in there and it exploded and that's how the season ended. Oh. So we don't know if they got out or not. I bet they did. But it's been renewed for a third season. And then since we were gone, we haven't watched what's been on this week, but we have Big Bang Theory, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., we have NCIS, we have NCIS New Orleans... And we have a new blind spot to watch. Oh, okay. So today's Thursday, and it comes on on Wednesday, so we watch it on Thursdays. So we will get caught up with all the new TV, and we'll have that to share with you in next week's episode. But for now, we should move on to the cows. And now we're going to talk about our September, October, November artistic autumnal cow. Yes. And this started on the 1st of September, and it runs through the 30th of November. So you have a little over two months left still. It's for anything you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us relates to autumn. No whips are allowed, so start September 1st or later and finish by the 30th of November. But feel free to poly dip in any other cows that fit within the rules. So you could like put your, put your thing into the Gilmore Girls cow if it relates there. Um, charity cow, our, our 52 weeks of charity cow, and there's tons, so many podcasts have cows going right now. Mm -hmm. There is, um, the pumpkin cow is going on right now Ooh. in, um, in Opera Joe's Stitching the High Notes. Yeah, Stitching the High Notes, and she's doing it in collaboration with someone that I don't recall who. And Jill is someone making your socks? Uh, I'm fairly certain, yes. My pumpkin spice socks. Um, there are year-long sock cows. There are sweater cows. There's coffee with CC cow in the vegan. The J vegan Jilly is the knitting broomstick podcast. Um, we have loads of prizes, and they are up on the screen right now. But we would like to highlight a couple of things. 
So we announced, I believe, last week that we had two Baker's Dozen mini skein sets from Amber, who is Devious Angel. But she, she messaged me and she was like, in my excitement over this, I forgot to tell you the details. So these are um, Meadowcroft Dye Works and Yarn Rehab Yarn on their Rock Shelter base in various colorways. And each mini skein has 20 yards of 100% Superwash Merino yarn. So, And then we have a new prize from Naomi, who is Cozy Cute Knits. We have a copy of her beautiful Warrior Cow pattern to give away. So thank you so much to all our sponsors. If you want to know more about the prizes, tune in to the first podcast of every month where we talk about them in detail or go to the show notes. GeekyGirlsNet.com And you can read all about them there. Um, so every project you finish and post counts as one entry in the giveaway. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group on Ravelry to participate. Post your, a picture of your finished project in the FO thread and tag it with GGK Autumnal 16. You, you don't have to tag it. But if you do tag it, if yeah. you want to tag it, or if you like post on Instagram or whatever, you can use the mm -hmm. hashtag. Um, so we'll lock the thread the morning of the 1st of December and draw winners on the next podcast after that. Um, you'll have 30 days to claim your prizes, which reminds me, we still have, we have summer cow prizes and we have fourth anniversary prizes that have not been claimed mm. and time is running out. So if you entered either of those things, you should go back and watch because you might be a winner because... I have an, a big I have a whole bag of stuff on my couch right now waiting to be delivered to into your hands, but you have to claim it. Um, there's a chatter thread, um, and I'm scrolling the wrong way. Um, so, Dammy, I think that's everything other than who finished projects this week. Why don't you give them some shout outs? Okay. Auntie Knits a Lot, Bizzle87, Celeste, Chiefy, C. Howard06, Cozy Cute Knits, Devious Angel, DG White, Evil Twin 2, Philippa MC, Gothica 101, Gracie Lus, Ingard Stoka, Katie Did What 1, Knit Princess 83, Cosmic, Little Angel SG2, Elle McCall, Lucy J. Will, Mantha Mac, MV Knits, Napier's Knits, Natalu Kathleen, Night Owl Knitter 15, Nimrus, Rainbow Ange, Rue CMC, Shirley Murley, Stitching Plaza, TBS80, BVFB, VT Kimmy Kim, and Weeping Wool. Great job, everybody. So keep working on those projects and get them posted in the thread. All right, let's talk about the next cowl. And now we're going to talk about our Gilmore Girls cowl. That's right. So this is a cowl we're doing in collaboration with Vegan Jilly of the Knitting Broomstick Podcast. Um, it started on the 1st of August, and it runs through the 30th of September, so you have about a week left. So it's for any project you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to Gilmore Girls. No whips are allowed August 1st or later and finish by the 30th of September. Feel free to poly dip in other cows as long as it meets the rules. We have lots of lovely, lovely prizes, which are on the screen right now. If you would like more details on those, go to geekygirlsknit.com That's right, and thank you so much to our sponsors who donated prizes. Every project you finish and post in the FO thread is counts for one entry into the giveaway. However, you can get a second bonus entry if you knit my Where You Lead I Will Follow sock pattern. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be a member of both groups. You have to be a member of Geeky Girls Knit and the Knitting Broomstick groups on Ravelry to enter. There's uh, So the FO thread is in our group. And the chatter thread is in Jilly's group. Um, the hashtag is GilmoreGGKTKB. We'll lock the thread the morning of the 1st of October. And we'll draw winners on the next podcast after that. You'll have 30 days to claim your prize from the time we announce him. And um, Jilly will also announce him on her podcast. Um, I think that is everything other than who finished projects this week. So why don't you give him a shout out? Okay. Amy Lynn, Bizzle87, Bunny Spinner, Carola77, Celeste, Devious Angel, Ditsy Mermaid, Fun Friend, Knit, Lo Knit Live Love, Knit Princess83, Cosmic, Laura Pointier, M. Dorham, Mookie Moo1974, M. V. Knits, Me Patrish, 
Quill Pin, Saucy Minx, Shirley Murley, Stitching Plaza, The VFB, and VT Kimmy Kim. Great job, everybody. So, like I said, you have a little over a week left, so get those projects finished and posted, and you might be a winner of one of these amazing prizes, because there's some really good ones. All right, let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, part of our show where you ask us things and we answer them. That's right. So what is this week's question? This week's question comes from Nikki, who is Nikki Hippie from London. Am I asking it? Yes, please. I have a question about designing. I'm currently working on my very first ever knitting pattern. Yay! Yay. As I was working on my first design. When the question when was asked. When the question was asked. I thought I'd ask you both, do you design on the needles or on paper first? How much do you plan out before you cast on and test it? And how much on average do you think you change once knitting? Do you want to start? Um, I don't know. It depends. Like, I do a bit of both. Like, maybe I do one repeat of, like, the pattern on the needles and then, like, write it all down. Okay. So for me, it depends. I mean, a lot of times I'll have, you know, if, especially if it's a pattern that's inspired by a person or a thing or a character or whatever, a lot of times I'll have an idea in my mind and then I'll search through some stitch dictionaries that I have and see if I can make something match up. Um, and then I usually... I usually chart out at least a repeat to then test with to just see how it looks once it's knit up. Um, and usually once I get to that point, it doesn't change very much. There have been some exceptions. The one that always pops to mind is the canine inspired socks, the Doctor Who socks, that I could not make what I had in my mind come to life in the sock. Um, it, it just didn't, yeah, that's the one that always pops to mind. And so I think I ended up ripping out that sock three or four times before I got that pattern to go. Um, yeah, I, it's very rare that I design straight on the needles. I usually at least draw it out first to play with and then and go from there yeah yeah that's that's what I would say um but usually like I said if it's something that's inspired by well what, which is pretty much all my patterns you know whether it's inspired by a Doctor Who character or by a coffee drink or you know by a movie or a musical or whatever I usually have some kind of idea in my brain that I want to then make be interpreted into the yarn. Mm -hmm. Did we answer the question? I think so. I think so too. Thank you for the question, Nikki. I hope that's helpful to you. Um, so if somebody has a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. That's right. All right, well, we have a review and then a giveaway winner to announce. Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Now we have a review. And then a giveaway winner. Yes. We're going to do that in the same segment. So with our apologies for this being late, we didn't get to pick this up as soon as we normally would have because I was in hospital and then recovering from surgery. But it's not too late because today's the first day of autumn. This is Pom Pom Quarterly, issue 18, autumn 2016. And the theme is Autumn Colors, the Natural Dyes issue. <laughs> dies and oh my gosh I, I just love the paper and the smell I just want to like would you like to work for pom pom quarterly so you can smell it and just hold it all the time yes yes it is just so fabulous I love 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 the paper they use okay so there are several really great patterns in here. So let's tell you about them. First up is Thessaly by Hannah Macy Juska. And all of the yarn in this issue are is natural dyed, which is really mm -hmm. cool. 
So this first yarn is Gregory, Gregoria Fibers Merino DK, and I love the illustrations they used that they drew of um, what was used to dye it. Mm -hmm. So this is a cardigan with really cool cable detail along the um, shoulder seam. Yes, that's what I was trying to think. I was like, what's the word? So this one is as normal. Pom Pom has great, great size options. So there's six different sizes. Um, as I said, it's done on DK weight. It's knit using US 6, 4 mil and US 7, 4.5 mil needles. And let's see, I just forgot to look what her inspiration was. Sorry, the pages are there. Um, Vines growing up trellises. Yes. It's knit seamlessly, beginning with the collar and working down, which I love seamless sweaters. I like this one. I do too, and I'll tell you why in a minute. This is the Tavara mm -hmm. by Paula Peri Peri I don't know. Someone Perira. Per Perira. Apologies for butchering names. The yarn this is uh, done in is a yarn for keeping warm, a oh. verb for keeping warm, Pioneer, and it's, it, the dye is fustic. Um, so, I'm going to show them this picture first. So, you think this is just like a, you know, a simple, simple sweater, until you look at the back. How fantastic is that? And can I just say, I love the different models that they use. They don't, they don't use just like high fashion runway models. They use people that look like all of us. And I appreciate that a lot, Pom Pom. So there's another picture of the back. Her nose is pierced. I noticed that. How fun is that? So why do you love this? I don't know. It just looks really comfy. It does. It looks pretty cozy. Um, let me find the details. Sorry. Which reminds me, I still have a sweater I need to knit. Yes. Oops. So this one is done in five sizes. It's a worsted weight yarn. Done on US 7's 4.5 mil, US 6's 4 mil, and US 4's 3.5 mil. Um, it starts at the bottom band and is worked flat before joining in the round and working upward. There's a short row section to create the additional back length. It's got an I-cord edging. It's lovely. It is so, so lovely. Then the next pattern is Kali by Fiona Alice. The yarn is Elizabeth Beverly Plant Dyed Cashmere. And there's also threads used, the, how do you say that? Tamaritius. Cotton threads. And this was dyed with red cabbage. And these... But it's not red. I know, which is crazy. Um, so, yeah, so these are fingerless mitts. Fuzzy, fuzzy fingerless mitts. Um, and let's see, details, so these are done in three sizes, it's a DK light worsted weight and then the thread that's held with it, they look cozy, mm -hmm. yeah, next up is Ayara by Renee Callahan, and this yarn, which I have knit in before, is Kettle Yarn Co. Baskerville, dyed with indigo. And this is just uh, a stunning wrap. That was a scarf. It's like a big wrap like that you could wear as a oh. scarf or whatever. Um, and, and Pom Pom says that they love how she combines stripes with lace details. And she was inspired by rivers which can be seen in the clean lines flowing toward the ends of Ayara, like wavelets breaking on a riverbank. That's lovely, lovely, lovely. 
um, let's look at the details here. So this is one size. This is done with a light four ply fingering weight on US 5 3.75 mil needles. And it's got simple charts in it. It's quite a large wrap though, 79 inches by 18 inches. That's taller than me. Yes. Um, and then we have the cover sweater, which is the Velamo hmm. by Francesca Hughes. And it's knit with Shilzadar Luxury 4-ply. It's dyed with indigo. And bugs. And bugs. <laughs> I bet you didn't notice that before. I didn't. Is it lay and cochineal? Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> so this is a crop sweater, which always makes us think of our friend Jess from Ginger Twist Studio, who loves crop sweaters. I really like the detail on the sleeve. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cute. Um, so this is done in eight sizes. It's knit with a four ply fingering weight. The yarn they knit it with is baby alpaca, baby camel, angora, and lamb's wool. It's gonna be very fuzzy. Fuzzy and soft. It's done with US two and a half, three mil needles, and US three, 3.25 mil needles. It's knit in pieces before picking up stitches for the neckband, which is worked in the round. Yeah. So that is a fun, fun one. And then after that, we have Turion by Linda DeBeck. The yarn is a Buckaloo View Worsted One, and it's dyed with French marigolds. I like this pattern, but the bobbles look like they could get caught on something, and that always makes me worried. Yeah. Like anything that has, like, like big sections of slip stitches, like, um... And like bobbles like that always makes me worried it's gonna get caught on something and then get messed up. Yeah, it's really beautiful though. So there's two sizes. This is a worsted weight yarn. It's knit on US 6's 4 mil and US 7 4.5 mil. So it uses mirrored increases to achieve the thumb gusset with the angles for the right and left mitten. And the cable detail is mirrored on the mittens. It's really cute. They're really, really pretty. I'm not a mittens person, but I really like, I can appreciate the design of it. So next up is Tannins by Sally Oakley. The yarn is August Bird Bower Bird, dyed with black tea. Yum. Yum. Um, so it says, when Sally was small, she worked a little cross-stitch sheep for her grandmother. Kind of like the sheep I just got. The textured stitch pattern uh, is a nod to that magic of all those little X's making up a picture and it's got fringe reminiscent of her mother's macrame. What? Macrame is a is another craft with where you tie the the cord and it usually has lots of um bit fringe on it. Okay. You'll have to look it up. So this is one size. It's done with a DK light worsted weight. And it's knit using US 9's 5.5 mil needles. It's worked end to end, flat, and then you add the tassels after blocking using a simple looping technique. Yeah, it's really pretty. And then the next one is Brocane. Brocane by Christina Danay. And it's knit with Local Color Fiber Studio Rambouillet DK, dyed with French marigolds. So this is her take on a historical knit combining seafaring sensibilities with sunny marigold yellow and a modern boxy shape. There's that. It's got lots and lots of lovely detail on it. Um, this is knit, or let's see, it's in five sizes. Done with a DK light worsted weight using US 6's 4 mil and US 5's 3.7 five mil. It starts with a provisional cast on and is worked from bottom up before splitting for the yoke and working flat. The bottom rib bands are worked flat from the provisional cast on. 
with the back rib work to a slightly longer length in the front, which I love when I love that kind of detail. Um, yeah. And then next up, this is one of my favorites in here. This is Florence by Bristol Ivy. It's knit using Sincere Sheep Cormo fingering gradient, dyed with matter. And a bug. And then the same bug, co cochineal. Um, I love this because it's done in gradients. It's so pretty. Um, Bristol says that she's fascinated by the interplay between structure and softness. And so this stole plays on those two attributes. So there is the wrap. Um, so see there, you can see the how it's worked. So this is knit in one size using a four ply fingering weight, knit with US 5, 3.75 mil needles. So it's constructed modularly with, modularly, yeah, that's right. With sections picked up and knit from the preceding sections or joined to preceding sections using increases and decreases. Uh, it talks about how to lengthen it if you desire. So it's got triangles, chevrons, squares. Parallelograms. And, yeah, through it. It's, it's lovely. I really, really, really like it. Next one after that is the Asklov by Nicolina Lindstein. The yarn. Stin. Lindstein. Lindstein. Apologies for butchering names. You know that I do that regularly. The yarn is. Rivia. Rivia. I don't know. Vilo. And it's dyed using buckthorn. So the name of the pattern is the Swedish name for the ash tree leaf that inspired the shape of this pattern. So it's this beautiful hat. Um, it comes in two sizes. It's knit using a four ply fingering weight on US two and a half, three mil needles. And it's just, I love it. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love the, the, the pop of the bright of ye the yellow contrasted with the white of the color work. Yeah. And then my absolute favorite, I'm going to have to knit this out of this book, this uh, issue is the Serafine by Camille Roselle. And it's knit using fern fiber balsam dyed with matter. And it was, so this pullover with the handy pockets was inspired by the painting The Gleaners by Jean-Francois Millet. Mie. Mie. It shows three women collecting stray grains of wheat after the harvest and holding them in their aprons as they go. There. There it is. There's some more pictures. Here we go. I like it too. Oh, I love this. I'm going to have to knit it. Um... So the back is very simple. There's just that design coming down the front um, mm -hmm. and uh, across the outside of the pockets. So this comes in six sizes. It's knit with an Aran heavy worsted weight, so it'd be a quick knit. And it's knit using US 6's 4 mil and US 7's 4.5 mil needles. It's knit in the round from the top down with short row shaping across the shoulders and eyelid increases in the raglan lines. Two cables travel the length of the sweater and hide a pouch pocket in the front. I have to knit this. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And then we've got some articles as usual. This is called Witches, Friends, and Fugitives. Um, and it's an interview about natural dyer Christine Vahar. And then... Um, we have Make Your Mark, which is uh, about eco-dyeing. And then, that's all the patterns. Um, okay, and then we have an article called In the Wool Shed, Dip Dye Your Own Simple Ombre Scarf. And this is a visit to the studio of Emma Price uh, about dip dyeing using rhubarb. And it's a tutorial that walks you through the process. Hmm. It's really cool. Health and safety warning. Mm. <laughs> and then we have Magic Mordants, which is 
uh, DIYing your own mordants or modifiers using iron or copper. And then a yummy recipe, autumn beetroot soup. But it has yogurt in it. Yeah. It, it looks really yummy. It does. I like soup. I do Butternut too. squash soup, autumn beetroot soup, baked potato soup. Yeah. We must have that at least once this autumn because yes. that is a perfect autumn thing. And then there's leftovers for days. Yes. So this was Pom Pom Quarterly, issue 18, autumn 2016. I must knit that, that pullover. It's fabulous. But there's lots of great things in here. So make sure and check it out. We have a giveaway winner to announce. Yes. The lovely Kathleen Dames mm -hmm. and Anne Podlesack, who wrote the Filament magazine. They um, gave us the first issue to review, which we did a couple of weeks ago. And they also gave us an ebook copy to give away to one of y'all. And the winner is post number 44, Crazy Knitting Fool, who is Kristen. Crazy Knitting Fool, congratulations. Send me Java Pearl a PM on Ravelry when you see this, and then I will contact Kathleen and Anne to get you your copy. And thank you again, Kathleen and Anne, for giving us a copy to review and also a copy to give away. It was amazing. We love it. All right, we have a little bit more to talk about. Let's move on. We made it to the end. Almost. Almost. We know this was a long episode. Yeah. So, as I mentioned earlier, the Battlestar Galactica kits that I'm doing with Lola from Third Vault Yarn. She's the one that dyed that stunning, faster than light yarn mm -hmm. that I knit those socks with earlier this year. That was the blues. I thought that was last year. Was it? I thought it was like close to New Year's. I thought it was, I thought it was last year. It could have been. Anyway. Like late last year. It had the, the darker blue and the lighter blue and the white. And it was just stunning. And black. It was stunning. She has dyed some gorgeous yarn for these kits. And Sam of Knit Run Dig is doing a very special project bag. And I have designed a sock pattern called So Say We All. And these kits are up for pre-order now. They cost $62 US plus shipping. And in your kit you'll get the sock pattern from me. A skein of yarn from Lola. A project bag from Sam and goodies. Goodies. Who doesn't love goodies? And these are fabulous goodies, if I say so myself. So, those are up for pre-order right now on javapearldesigns.com. And they will ship out no later than Thursday, the 20th of October. So, if you have not gotten yours, go get it. Because they're limited. Um, a reminder about the 52 Weeks of Charity Cal. All the details are in the Ravelry group, and we talk about it on the second podcast of the month. Mm -hmm. Trying to think if we have any other announcements other than normal stuff. We're on schedule for the next couple of weeks, and then we'll be off schedule a little bit. But we'll keep you updated. So, um, let's talk about how you can support the podcast. A uh, huge thank you to our Patreon sponsors who support us on a monthly donation basis. And in return, they get some fabulous goodies, including fun postcards, which I picked up a couple of different types of postcards mm -hmm. in North Berwick while we were there, and they're so fun. So, uh, if you would like more information on sponsoring us, go to patreon.com slash geekygirlsknit. There's also a PayPal one-time donate button on our website, and we are also Amazon.com and .co.uk affiliates. If you click through our website to shop, Amazon gives us a little money back. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost you anything extra, and it pays for shipping of prizes. Um, so where can they find out more about that, and where can they find us online? You can go to geekygirlsknit.com. There, there are links to everywhere else we are online. Wait, geekygirlsknit.com mm -hmm. or dot blogspot? Either one. Geekygirlsknit.com redirects to the blogspot. Okay. There, there are links to everywhere else we are online, YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. Yeah, we've only been doing this for 210 episodes. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. You know, being on, us not being on, recording on as normal on Wednesday totally has thrown our brains. Yeah. So, stay tuned after the credits for lots of 
photos and videos from our trip to North Berwick. Mm -hmm. And we hope you have a lovely rest of your week. We will talk to you guys as normal next week. Until then, happy knitting. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye.
just completely ignore it to show you to it. The grey seal and the common seal. And strange enough, the common seal is quite common. No, the common seal is quite rare, and the grey seal is quite common. And that made an adult grey seal. 